In this video, I'm going to talk about neuron membrane potentials. And what a membrane potential means in any type of cell is that at the cell membrane around the cell, there's a separation of charges so that there's more positive than negative charges in a layer along one side and vice versa. And this separation of charges is usually the same all over the cell. So if you look anywhere along the cell membrane, and here I've drawn a typical multipolar neuron, and I've drawn the soma in red and the axon in green with a couple of axon terminals and a couple of dendrites with a few branches on them in blue. And everywhere along this membrane in the dendrites and the soma and the axon, there is usually a membrane potential with a separation of charges across the membrane. Now these membrane potentials are how neurons perform their function, which is to process and transmit information. Without input, most neurons have a stable separation of charges across their membrane, a membrane potential, so that if we looked anywhere along the cell membrane and we graphed it, like I've drawn here, where we can put time on the x-axis, and we can quantify the strength of the charge separation, which is usually done in the value of millivolts here on the y-axis, for a typical neuron that's not receiving any inputs, the membrane potential would be stable over time. It wouldn't be changing. And so that stable membrane potential in the absence of input is called the resting potential. Resting. But neurons are going to receive input information, which could be excitatory or inhibitory to the neuron, and that can come from one of many potential sources. A common source of inputs are other cells, and in particular, other neurons. So for example, I'm drawing the axon of another neuron here that's going to provide input information to this neuron, usually in the form of neurotransmitter molecules released into the synapse to bind to receptors. But there can be other kinds of input information. For instance, the molecules that float out around in the air that we perceive as odors could land on receptors on certain types of neurons, so that there are a few different kinds of inputs that could bring information into a neuron. Input information usually comes into neurons through the dendrites, but it can also come into parts of the soma and even parts of the axon. Neurons just happen to be set up that most input information comes in through the dendrites. Input information that is coming in through the dendrites or the soma is going to be transmitted to the axon as a change in the membrane potential away from the resting potential. And these changes could be excitatory or they could be inhibitory, depending on what the stimulus is. And we call these kinds of membrane potential changes graded potentials. Graded because they can be graduated. There can be different strengths. Graded potentials are usually small in size, brief in duration, and they usually travel just short distances from where that input information comes in. So for example, this cell that's giving input information over here might have caused this, this bit of membrane to have a change in the membrane potential in this direction briefly, whereas this input information over here might have had the opposite effect on a different piece of membrane down here. And the size and the duration of a graded potential is usually proportional to the size and the duration of input information coming into that piece of the membrane. These graded potentials can be happening in many different places in the dendrites and the soma, but that information will be transmitted to where the axon comes out of the soma. This structure where the axon is coming out of the soma is often a little rounded up like a little hill so it's actually called the axon hillock. Axon hillock. And either at the axon hillock or somewhere close to it, usually, there's a functional area that's called the trigger zone. Trigger zone. And at the axon trigger zone, all that information from all the different graded potentials that are coming to that piece of membrane get combined together. And that process of combining all the graded potentials is called summation. Summation. And summation is the way neurons process information from their inputs that then become graded potentials traveling to the axon trigger zone. Now the membrane potential at the trigger zone may be going up or down from the normal resting potential, and these graded potential changes will usually be brief. However, if the membrane potential at the trigger zone goes over a certain value, 
that may be a little different for every neuron, and this value is, is known as the threshold potential, threshold potential. If the graded potential changes cause the membrane potential at the trigger zone to cross the threshold potential, a different kind of membrane potential change occurs that has a totally different kind of shape to it, which is called an action potential. Action potential. And the action potential will then be conducted from the trigger zone all the way down the axon to the axon terminals. And that kind of waveform of the action potential will look the same as it moves down the axon. It'll be very similar shape whether we check in with it early down here by the trigger zone or later halfway down the axon or even later farther down the axon close to the axon terminals. So these action potentials are usually large in size brief in duration, and they can travel very long distances down very long axons, including axons that start at the top of your brain and then go all the way down to the bottom of your spinal cord in your low back. Action potentials are usually the same size and duration for any given neuron. A few things affect how fast action potentials are conducted down axons. Axons that are larger in diameter usually conduct action potentials faster, and axons that have a myelin sheath wrapped around them tend to conduct action potentials faster. When an action potential reaches an axon terminal, neurotransmitter is usually released at a synapse to bind to receptors on the target cell of the neuron. So let me just draw a little target shape to represent the target cell of this neuron. And that neurotransmitter release and the binding of neurotransmitter to receptors on the target cell may change its behavior. The input information contained in the size and the duration of graded potentials in the dendrites and the soma are converted into the temporal pattern or the timing of action potentials being conducted down the axon. This information is then converted into the amount and temporal pattern of neurotransmitter release at the synapse. Patterns of neurotransmitter release, determined by patterns of action potential firing in the axon, are the way that neurons transmit information to their target cells.